Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. Carolyn Pham, CFTC chairman, discussing non-state world reserve currencies. <laughs> Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. We're everywhere. Give us a follow right now. Bitcoin is 22,800 plus this morning, up 8.87% on the seven day. Ethereum at 1,500 plus right now, 13.51% up on the seven day. XRP up over 12% right now at 36 cents. This is something going on here, but what is it? We all don't exactly know. It's August 2nd, 2022. Good afternoon, everybody. Take a look at what we have for you, ranging on price very quickly here. It's 37 on the bottom, 39 on the top. We'll keep an eye on it. I want to tell you right now, you know, this is an incredible article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you here, but this is the gist of it right here. Mario and Echo here. I've caught the Bank of England red hand in fudging the inflation data. And I tell you right now, this is why I'm so excited about Glint because Glint is hashtag GoldFi, Gold Financial System. That's what they're building. And you know what else they're doing? They're working on building a bridge to crypto to this gold financial system. How about that one? Shout out to Jason Cousins, the CEO of Glint Founder and Glint Founder there. Uh, that's why I use Glint Pay to get my gold. And I can, for the first time ever, use a debit card attached to my account and and spend my gold and hedge the inflation whether they're fudging the data or not it is very exciting check the link out underneath the video and go read that article on my twitter no doubt about it right here from michael branch give him a follow he got hacked let's get his followers back right here the law commission of england and wales put out some consultation paper that proposes creating a new form of property for conferring legal rights to cryptocurrencies now very quickly let's take a look at this this is probably not a bad idea here ladies and gentlemen and we know the u.s pays very close attention to what's happening in the uk so look at this the law commission of england and wales published a consultation paper on crypto market talking about several aspects of the asset class it says here it formed uh re focused on reforming laws with respect to certain digital assets as objects of property rights if you take a look at this uh, crypto property rights conferring property rights to the asset class helps proper characterization of modern and complex legal relationships plays a role in insolvency cases big deal there and for situations concerning the succession on death now that's a very important point to deal with going forward the vesting of property on personal bankruptcy and tracing in cases of fraud theft or breach of trust all of these areas are extremely important and they do have to be dealt with not just in England, but around the globe here. And look at this. Shout out to Digital Asset Investor for this clip. What I want to focus on is right at the end of this clip here about how this conversation with Caroline Pham from the CFTC, who has been very clear that there is no clarity in this space for crypto, and she wants to help make sure that we have it. But I want to take you to a clip here that I find very important. When you understand just how important the the digital asset space is, because it is a concern of national security issue. And she goes on to talk about greater concerns of one of these digital assets, a non-state becoming a non-state world reserve currency. Really? Take a listen to this clip here. And so this is really, I think, things that people are thinking about and it's things that people are concerned about. And I think there are also concerns about what does it mean, again, from a geopolitical perspective, if should another currency arise as the world's reserve currency, or if there's a non-state currency, so to speak, that becomes a world's reserve. That, that's another thing that I think people are very concerned about. 
very concerned about. And I tell you, it is the right question to ask. And she says whether another currency could become the world reserve currency aside from the U.S. dollar or whether a non-state pointing to a crypto digital asset, I happen to liken it towards XRP. And I'll show you why in just a second. But let's keep in mind here in the United States, to the point of defining this space, the SEC's crypto lawsuits never seem to stop, and they could reach the Supreme Court, which is uniquely situated to say what relevance, if any, its Howey test and the underlying statutes have to cryptocurrency. SEC versus Ripple is perhaps the most likely. Now, we've discussed this idea that the case with the SEC could go all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah, I said the Supreme Court. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that we would be halted between now and the time it went to Supreme Court, which could take up to a couple years. With that being said, we could get a favorable decision in this particular court case and then see it be appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court for finality on the matter. But we could see Ripple and XRP operate if they get a favorable uh, decision until that judgment happens in the Supreme Court, which I think would support any positive ruling for XRP itself, which I would imagine it should get with the way the SEC has handled the case. But that doesn't stop them from going the distance because we know that we need to have finality at something like this. Think about this. XRP is going to be used for all the money or certainly available to all the money of the world, all the value of the world. Then the reality is you're going to want some kind of finality on what this tech is, what XRP is, and who gets to regulate it above all else. And right here, we see what real decentralization looks like. Ripple believes proactive communication and transparency are part of being a responsible stakeholder. And take a look at that. You want to see what decentralization looks like? There you have it right there, ladies and gentlemen. And to that point, and to Caroline Pham's point from the CFTC, you could ask yourself the concern if something like a non-state World reserve currency or a non-state asset could grow into the point of becoming a world reserve currency. And then let's take a look at this. The real use cases for Ripple and XRP. Anders asked here, he said, could Ripple and Swift potentially work together? Well, let's take a listen to this clip very quickly. Now, there are edits in this that have some dead spots and it jumps back in. He's looping things, but it is necessary to catch the sections that Anders has set up here. Take a quick listen. Gottfried, why not use Ripple's technology to do that? Great question. Because, well, we'll have to see. I, I think what we are seeing, uh, um, we, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I, yeah, before you were working at Swift, which is yeah kind of competitor to uh, Ripple, so it's uh, I, I have the impression both Swift and Ripple are not quite sure whether to be competitors and to wall off or rather collaborate and build something together. Be competitors and to wall off or rather collaborate and build something together. Mm -hmm. I personally think that um, um, the, the Ripple and Swift are doing different things. Ripple and Swift are doing different things. Uh, it's true that at the end we are talking about transferring value, but um, Re Swift is a messaging mechanism. Mm. Of course, it's widely present with the large users, but it remains only to the exchange of data. Uh, but when you get to the blockchain and what Ripple is doing, you are going beyond that ex ex exchange of data. You are actually settling value. You are providing the finality and certainty of the payment. So I think it could be very much complementary. So I think it could be very much complementary. Now, uh, probably, the, you know, it takes time before the business lines can, can meet each other. You know, it takes time before the business lines can, can meet each other. But if we look at this, SWIFT equals payments messaging, RippleNet equals payments messaging settlement, settlement equals XRP. 
And then we see here Marjan Delatine, who was just speaking, Ripple, and we know that she formerly used to work at Swift and Swift GPI. And Joel Katz said here, if Swift wants to fix payments for us, that's great. It's one less thing we have to do. Then we also have a clip also that he's going to show us next on this coming up here, which is this. If Swift wants to fix payments for us, that's great. It's one less thing we have to do. David Schwartz. Time for a new standard. Time for Swift GPI. And we know what Swift GPI is. Brad Garlinghouse has told us it's like a race car body on an old Model T Ford. It doesn't get the job done. It's instant payment, but it's still not instant settlement. And that's the problem. But let's take a look at this because this came out back in July 2020, I believe it was. And it's from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And they, in fact, stated, which is an enforcement agency, by the way, that SWIFT's GPI right here and, by the way, Ripple, virtual currency company Ripple, offer payment messaging platform to support cross-border payments, money transfer, as well as proprietary virtual currency XRP, they say, which can be used to affect settlement of those transfers for banks and credit unions. Now, they know something. Then I want to show you this here, because this is a diagram I have shown on my channel before that I believe when we hear Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse talking about building the market infrastructure for this space, I think it's a rather lawfully comment and it makes sense, but it's much bigger because I don't believe they're concerned with as much as that remittance companies, I believe, build the end to end to individual users, the money tap and this, that and the other. Right. But what they're working on, I believe, is a much tighter closed loop. I believe RippleNet, in fact, is the new digital arm for Swift, whether Swift wants to realize that yet or know it. And I also believe that PolySign can serve because they're digitizing the entire capitals market. PolySign can serve as a digital side for the DTCC, I believe. My speculation, my digital perspectives, not financial advice. And the question left is, is will Ripple become a central back, bank to be a backstop for the Federal Reserve? And will XRP's escrow become more value than we could ever imagine? And as I asked a second ago, what is XRP? I believe it's money. And I believe that's what this case is about, especially when you factor in the Reeves test, because the Howey test, as far as I'm concerned, is busted. And then when you get to that question of understanding that it is money, then we have to start asking, then who gets to regulate it? We know that the CFTC has said clearly that the BTC and the Ethereum are commodities and they believe that they should regulate half of the market. Well, if you're looking at market cap as the metric, half of the market is these two tokens. You look at the jurisdictional land grab that the SEC and Gary Gensler are currently in route to accomplish here then 90% of the rest of the tokens will become digital asset securities and more than likely be treated like a penny stock market with digital tokens. And if we're lucky and we get the outcome that we see for Ripple and XRP and certainly Stellar and XLM, one being a profit company and one being nonprofit, then just maybe the U.S. Treasury will oversee those. However, with all of that being said, I want you to remember this little gem. This isn't just about a YouTuber, podcasters out here, ladies and gentlemen. Caroline Pham from the CFTC is talking about concerns of a non-state world reserve currency. And Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, is talking about rapid changes taking place in the global monetary system that may in fact affect the international role of the US dollar. Looking forward, rapid changes are taking place in the global monetary system that may affect the international role of the dollar in the future. Mm -hmm. Most major economies already have or are in the process of developing instant 24 seven payments. Our own FedNow service will be coming online in 2023. And in light of the tremendous growth in crypto assets and stable coins, we are examining whether a US central bank digital currency would improve upon 
what is an already safe and efficient domestic payment system. Our, as our white paper on this topic notes, a U.S. CBDC could also potentially help maintain the dollar's international standing. So then there's that. But we're not done just yet, ladies and gentlemen. I have one more thing for you to hear before we go. Out of this entire situation and this entire question of whether a non-state world reserve currency could in fact rise up to such an occasion, I believe the irony of it all, Gary Gensler, above everyone else, knows exactly what the role of Ripple and XRP should be, and I'm going to let him tell you. Um, but to go between Tanzania and Nigeria, you need, you need somebody to bear some counterparty risk that the ledgers both move and are adjusted at the same time. And usually it's a bank that is in both countries. You could use blockchain, but you the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between, and that bridge could be a stable value that's that's you know backed by the U.S. dollar or the euro. It could be a currency even like uh, Ripple has an alternative. It's just piloted in May, so it's XRP. it's not yet up in any enterprise wide level. You could use blockchain, but you. The current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between, and that bridge could be a stable value. Mm. Bridge currency in between, and that bridge could be a stable value. Mm -hmm. The current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between, and that bridge could be a stable value. You mean like the stable coin XRP that is cited in the World Bank document that we went over yesterday, Gary? I find it really, really ironic that Gary Gensler knows exactly what Ripple and XRP are, but yet we're being sued anyway. And maybe, just maybe, that weaponized case turns out to be a slingshot for XRP Clarity to lead this space. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.